Welcome to Virtual Veg Out, a partnership between Jessamine County Public Library and the University of Kentucky's College of Agriculture, Food, and Environment's Cooperative Extension Service. Today we're going to explore the history of that American staple, the hamburger. Then we'll teach you how to make a couple tasty versions of the hamburger's younger, usually healthier sibling, the veggie burger. There are many arguments as to what should be considered the first hamburger recipe. Certainly people have been eating chopped up cooked meat for thousands of years. Author and science writer Jackson Landers tested a recipe for a ground meat patty from the Apicius, a cookbook from ancient Rome written in the first century AD. This recipe included minced meat, chopped nuts, and wine. Landers and his team agreed that it had all the flavors of a modern gourmet hamburger without the bun. Some internet sources point to Genghis Khan and his army of horseback riding Mongol soldiers for the hamburger's origin story. Supposedly, the Mongols would place chunks of raw meat, likely lamb, horse, or even camel, under their saddles. This practice gave them protection from saddle sores and a tenderized meat snack when they stopped to rest. When Genghis Khan's grandson, Kublai Khan, invaded Moscow, the Golden Horde introduced the Russians to eating minced raw meat. Since the Russians called Mongolia Tartary, the dish was called steak tartare. Russian immigrants brought recipes for steak tartare to the bustling port of Hamburg, Germany in the 17th century, where it was adapted again. The German version called for cakes of hand minced meat bound with eggs and breadcrumbs to be fried with onions. In the mid-1800s, immigrants from Germany and many other European countries as well came to the United States on the Hamburg America Line boats, bringing with them recipes for Hamburg steak. Vendors and restaurants in New York City's harbor probably began offering Hamburg-style steaks to appeal to German sailors and the newly arrived immigrants craving a taste of home. An American cookbook from 1884 called Mrs. Lincoln's Boston Cookbook gives a detailed recipe for Hamburg steak. In this recipe, the meat is pounded, layered with onions, and pounded again. It was quite a lot of work though possibly a bit less work than finally mincing the meat by hand, but the resulting texture was not very much like a hamburger. The real rise of meat with unmistakable hamburger texture comes after the meat grinder becomes a popular and common device. The universal food chopper was invented in 1897 and its popularity spread when it became available in the Sears Roebuck catalog. There are many stories told of the first clever person to put ground steak between two pieces of bread. One such story involves a man named Charlie Nagreen, who was trying to sell meatballs from his ox-strong food stand at the Outagamie County Fair in Seymour, Wisconsin. Business was not going well, and he surmised that it was because the meatballs were difficult to eat while walking around the fair. He flattened them between two pieces of bread and called it a hamburger. Since that time, he was called Hamburger Charlie, and the town of Seymour, Wisconsin has a Hamburger Hall of Fame built in Charlie's honor. Brothers Frank and Charles Menchez from Akron, Ohio, also claim that they were the first people to put beef between two slices of bread. It happened in a similar concession stand scenario in 1885. Akron is now home to the National Hamburger Festival. The family of Oscar Weber Bilby claims that the first known hamburger to be put on a bun rather than two slices of bread was served on their Grandpa Oscar's farm just west of Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1891. In 1933, Oscar and his son opened a hamburger stand called Weber's Superior Root Beer Stand. The hamburger gained national recognition at the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis, Missouri. Many think that the owner of the concession stand that earned the hamburger its reputation was Fletch Davis, also known as Old Dave, who owned a lunch counter in Athens, Texas. There was a period of time after the publishing of Upton Sinclair's book, The Jungle, when ground meat became suspect. Sinclair had made known some of the poor sanitation practices of the meat packing industry, and Americans were a bit reluctant to buy ground meat products from restaurants and concession stands. Enter White Castle, Generally credited as the country's first fast food hamburger chain, it appeared in 1921. 
Its founders, Walter Anderson and Billy Ingram, wanted to invoke a sense of cleanliness and transparency. So they allowed customers to see the cooks grinding the fresh meat, outfitted their staff in spotless uniforms, and made the kitchen shiny with stainless steel counters. Their concept was a wild success, and it led to the founding of many other fast food hamburger joints, need I mention McDonald's, or Burger King, or In-N-Out Burger? Now many fast food restaurants are offering vegetarian and vegan burgers, but it's a relatively new trend. As early as 1969, historians have found recipes for burgers made without meat products. But the first commercially successful Vegja burger was created by London-based natural food restaurant owner Gregory Sams in 1982. In the 70s, John Lennon and Yoko Ono were regulars at Sams' restaurant called Seed. Sams left the restaurant business when he perfected the recipe for his Vegja burger. He launched the Real Eat Company from his spare bedroom. The packets of dried Vegja burger flew off the shelves, and by the time Sam sold the business in 1988, it was worth $13 million. Now the variations on the hamburger and the veggie burger are countless, as are the sizes and ranges of healthiness. If you were to cook a single 3-ounce, 90% lean beef patty at home, it contains over 75 milligrams of cholesterol and 20% of the daily recommended value of saturated fat. But these days, most burgers served in restaurants are much larger and contain a lot more than just a simple beef patty. Most fast food chains offer vegetarian or vegan burger options, but these, while a little bit better for the planet and lower in cholesterol and saturated fat, aren't always the best choice for watching your weight. We're going to give you two great recipes for veggie burgers that eliminate the cholesterol and the saturated fat while increasing the vitamin and fiber content. First, I'll let Jessie Carley from the Jessamine County Cooperative Extension Office show you her version. least, here is my very own recipe for veggie burgers. First, cook an equal mixture of lentils, quinoa, and rice. Boil them till they're soft, and then set them aside to cool. Make sure all the water is boiled off, and if you want to leave them overnight, it helps dry them out. Then puree about a can and a half of black beans or a tri-bean blend, and mix all the other ingredients together until you have a nice, firm, dough-like substance. Roll it out, till it's about a half an inch thick, and then cut it with a glass or cookie cutter into about three inch circles. Fry them up in a pan and enjoy. Thanks a lot for listening. I hope you'll join us again on our Veg Out for next month. And until then, please subscribe to our Jessamine County Public Library YouTube channel.